The thrilling adventures of the shadow are on the air. Brought to you each week at this time by your neighborhood blue coal dealer. These dramatizations are designed to demonstrate forcibly to old and young alike that crime does not pay. One way that you can help your country's war effort is to put in all the coal you'll need for home heating right away. It's a patriotic thing to do because transportation facilities are needed for war supplies. Get in touch with your neighborhood blue coal dealer, who at present has reserves of blue coal on hand. There is no shortage of blue coal today, and suppliers should be adequate to meet the needs of every user. However, circumstances may change, and it's wise not to take chances. There's a long stretch of cold weather ahead of us, so don't delay. Fill your coal bin now and be safe. Call your friendly blue coal dealer tomorrow. The Shadow, mysterious character who aids the forces of law and order, is in reality Lamont Cranston, wealthy young man about town. Several years ago in the Orient, Cranston learned a strange and mysterious secret the secret of hypnotic power to cloud men's minds so that they cannot see him. Cranston's friend and companion, the lovely Margot Lane, is the only person who knows to whom the voice of the invisible shadow belongs. Today's drama, Death Pulls the Strings. Call me Goro. Don't ask who I am or where I came from. Just let us say there is a man called Goro. A man? <laughs> Can you call a freak of nature, a twisted monstrosity, an evil, ugly thing a man? No. I am Goro, nature's bizarre caricature of a man. I'm not pleasant to look upon, and I am still strong enough to compel fear. The weakness of my withered limbs is compensated by the strength of my arms. Is it not strange that I, with my almost useless legs, should want to dance? Is it not amusing that I, who could have been the greatest ballet master in the world, should play with puppets, with articulated dolls which I dangle on the ends of strings? Is it not strange that I should hate all those who move gracefully, beautifully? No, my friends, it is not strange. <laughs> Tomorrow you are giving another dance concert, and this requires your immediate approval. All my plans for the charity review depend on it. Well, then I can guess it has something to do with your wonderful marionette. <laughs> uh, so far you are right. The rest is the surprise. Oh, is it? Ah, here we are. This is my studio. Oh, it's very charming, Rico. Well, shall we go in? Oh, yes. Yes, of course. Oh, yes. Yeah. You'd better go first, Rico. It's so dark. Afraid of the dark, my dear? Oh, then we shall have light. Oh. What is it? Oh, those... those shrouded figures hanging from the ceiling. For a moment I thought they but were... But they were people hanging there? Oh, no, my dear. Merely my life-size puppets. That is all. Now. Now for the surprise. Uh, Rico. Oh, don't think me silly, but... You won't be gone long. No, I am just going into the workroom. This room seems so eerie, with all your puppets hanging from the ceiling. Perhaps if you turned on more light. I am sorry, my dear, but there is no more light. Now, you must close your eyes. I will tell you when to open. All right. You're making a great mystery of this, Rico. I, I want to see your face when I bring back the surprise. Strange. That's my music. My music for my dance macabre. Oh. Oh, Rico. I've got my eyes closed. When may I see the surprise? Uh, uh, how much longer, Rico? Rico! No longer. 
Oh, no. No! So, Goro's oh. twisted body offends you, eh, Miss Childer? Who are you? And the brother of Rico, puppeteer extraordinary. Brother? Yes, Miss Childer. The handsome Rico is my brother. Or should I say the handsome Rico is my face? I don't understand. I am Rico's genius. My brother is without talent. I make these puppets and I make them dance. Even Rico dangles from my strings, obeys me. You? I revolt you, Miss Childer, eh? Unfortunately, my ugliness has always done that. I'm so sorry, and now I, I must leave. Not yet. No. I've seen you dance, Miss Childer. Your muscular control and coordination are magnificent, but... Where is Rico? But you lack imagination. I'm, I'm sure you're quite right. Now, please, please let me go. I will make you the greatest dancer in the world. My arm. You're hurting it. Yes. Yes, I must not hurt your arm. I must not bruise the muscles or sinews. Oh, for then, then you will be spoiled for my purpose. Oh, but I am strong, am I not? If I wanted to, I could crush the life from you with my hands. Oh, please, please, Goro, I must go. I, I no, really must. No, no, Miss Charlie, you must not go. What do you want of me? Some must be the puppets, and some must pull the strings. I have no choice in that matter. Oh, no. No! <laughs> Now, look, Miss Lane, Cranston, I'm perfectly willing to buy a ticket for the charity review. But why do I have to go and see that stupid Punch and Judy show and be bored? Punch and Judy show? <laughs> why, Commissioner Weston, Rico is probably the greatest puppeteer in the world. And I still say it's a Punch and Judy show, and I still don't like it. I'm too old for that kid stuff. <laughs> oh, why, Commissioner, Rico's puppets are a work of art. Work of art? Well, they can stay out of my cab. They can stay out. What's he talking about? What did you say, Shrevey? I am thinking about a sad experience my bosom friend and companion, Big Charlie, is having one time with puppets. As fortune is having it, he is driving a thoughtful dog act from here all the way to Boston in his cab he's driving. Well, what's that got to do with Rico's puppets, Shrevey? Well, up to the time of this horrible experience... He is uh, having with this now thoughtful dog act. He is liking dogs immensely. He is liking. Shrevey, I don't get it. Big Charlie did. Right in the back of his cab, he got it. One of the dogs in the thoughtful act is picking this time to have puppets. Puppets? Oh, Shrevey. <laughs> well, it's not so funny to Big Charlie, I can tell you. Shrevey, you mean puppies. That's what I'm saying, Mr. Cranston. <laughs> Baby dogs, little puppets. Yeah. Oh, Little puppets. <laughs> In case anyone is interested, that stoplight has changed. Yes, sir, it certainly has. What? Oh, golly. If we have to go to that Punch and Judy show, let's get there in time for tonight's performance. <laughs> Commissioner, you can stop applauding now. Eh? Yeah? Amazing, amazing. Oh, that, that man, Rico, does uh, um, amazing things with those, those life-size puppets. Mm, so you don't like the Punch and Judy show, eh, Commissioner? Now, now, spare my feelings, Miss Lane. Uh, you know, there were times when I almost forgot that those puppets were just things of wood and wire. They seemed so, so natural, so, so lifelike. There's the curtain. What's the next act, Lamont? Uh, I believe it's the dance macabre. Dance macabre? Isn't that the number that the dancer Diane Childer has made so famous? Diane Childer? Shh, quiet, Ed. Oh, quiet, Cranston. Annoy the people. I'm sorry, Commissioner. Lamont, that puppet is wonderful. Yes. It's beautifully made. Why, it looks exactly like Diane Childer. The dancer who disappeared. Oh, yes. So it does. I remember reading of... Diane! Lamont, that woman! What's the matter with her? Now, Doctor, where is this woman who made the disturbance in the theater? She's in the inner office, lying down, Commissioner Weston. What seems to be wrong with her, Doctor? Oh, nothing. A simple case of overwrought nerves. You see, her sister, Diane Child, has been missing for two or three days. And the puppet, she says, looked so much like her sister that... Why, Lamont, I said that very thing. Yes. 
So you did, Margot. Where is this woman who ruined my performance? Ah, who are you? The man asks who I am. I am Rico. Uh, Mr. Rico, the woman who, as you say, ruined your performance happens to be Diane Childer's sister. Oh, yes? Oh, I know Diane Childer very well. I am a great admirer of her dancing. Diane Child has been missing for several days, Mr. Rico. Would you know why? Oh, Cranston, relax. You're making a murder case of this business. Murder? Oh, don't get upset, Mr. Rico. If you'll step into the inner office with me alone, why, we'll ask Diane Child's sister a few questions. You'll forgive us, I'm sure, Cranston, Miss Lane. Well, I like that. So do I, Margot. Because now we can go backstage and have a look at Rico's puppets without being disturbed. Backstage? Margot, I have a feeling that the puppet used in the dance macabre is not a puppet. Why, Lamont, Rico wouldn't have to stoop to tricks to win his public. He's the world's greatest puppeteer. He'd have to be, Margot. Because I believe he was making a human body dance on his puppet strings. <laughs> Continue with Act Two of Death Pulls the Strings in just a moment. Meanwhile, let's talk about your kind of weather, the private weather inside your home. Nowadays, with the help of blue coal, you can have just the kind of weather you like, comfortably warm and yet not too hot, because blue coal burns evenly and smoothly. In fact, this tested superior home fuel is especially prepared, sized, and carefully graded for home use. Yes, it fits the requirements of your furnace. It's tailor-made for your home. That's why you're sure of complete satisfaction when you heat your home with blue coal. What's more, it's easier than ever to operate your furnace when you not only use blue coal, but also have the automatic blue coal heat regulator. This remarkable fuel saver is rapidly becoming a must in home heating. It's easily and quickly installed, and man, the work it saves will be a real eye-opener to you. All you do is set the indicator of the temperature you want and let science go to work for you from then on. Ask your neighborhood blue coal dealer for a free demonstration of the money-saving blue coal heat regulator. He's listed under the words blue coal in the yellow section of your classified phone directory. Call him tomorrow. Now, back to the shadow. <laughs> Here's the stage door, Margot. Let's go in and find out exactly what our friend Mr. Rico was up to. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. Doesn't seem to be anyone around. Oh. Stage doorman must have gone around to the front of the theater to see what the commotion was. Come on. Let's go on stage. Now, this way. Lamont, I've got a feeling that someone's watching us. We've got to be quick about this. Rico will be coming back any minute now. There's not much light on back Margot. here. Margot. There's the puppeteer's bridge. That's where they stand above the stage. Oh, I see. They're up above and they dangle the puppets on wires. Oh, here they are. What? These shrouded figures hanging here behind the scenery are the puppets. Which is the one used in the dance macabre note? No, no, let's see. That's not this one. Maybe it's this one here. No. Come on, suppose Rico's hidden it. He hasn't had time, Margot. Oh, yes, of course. What? It's still on stage in front of the scenery. I should have thought of that. You should have thought that you have no right to be here. What? What? Lamont! I'm not very pleasant to look upon, am I, miss? Now, will you please explain? Well, you see, we... uh, We're very much interested in the puppeteer's art, so we just thought we'd... Have a look around. Yes. Yes. You're very convincing, Mr... Uh, Uh, Cranston. Lamont Cranston. Uh, This is Miss Lane. They call me Goro. Rico chooses to call me his assistant. Lamont, I think we'd better go. Not yet. Exactly what were you looking for? I would like very much to see the puppet used in the dance macabre number. That is not possible. Well, it's your privilege to refuse to show it to us. Yes, that is right. And what would you think if I refused to show it to you? What I think is my privilege. Yes. (laughs) That also is true. You have heard that old saying, Mr. Cranston, curiosity once killed a cat? A cat is hard to kill. A cat has nine lives. 
A curious man has but one. Are you threatening me? I'm warning you. Well, let's go, Margot. There are other means of seeing this puppet. Meaning you will go to the police, Mr. Cranston? Take it any way you please. Come on, Margot. Yes, Lamont. Wait. Wait, I will show her to you. Here. Lamont. It, it's... Just a puppet. Made of wire and wood. What did you expect to find, Mr. Cranston? A human body? Hello? That you, Cranston? Yes, Commissioner. What is it? Cranston, I want you and Miss Lane to come to Pier 19 on the East River immediately. But we can't, Commissioner. We're going to... I don't care where you're going. This is important. Come to Pier 19 East River. I'll be waiting for you. Okay, Commissioner. We'll be there. Well, Commissioner, I suppose you know you ruined our evening. Now, what's so important? Cranston, I want you and Miss Lane to identify a body. A body? Lamont. We found her floating in the river. When was the body found? About an hour ago. She's over here under this tarpaulin. Why do you ask us to identify her? Because you know her. Or rather, you know her. Okay, Cardona, pull the tarpaulin off. Right, Chief. Diane Childer. Yes, Marco. Oh, Lamont. All right, Cardona, put the tarp back. Sorry to call you here for this sort of thing, but we needed your identification for the death warrant. You see, we couldn't locate her sister. And you won't locate her sister, Commissioner. Why not? Because I found out that Diane Childer never had a sister. Oh, Cranston, I talked with her myself last night at the theater. That woman was an imposter. Uh-huh. Still playing detective, eh, Cranston? Still playing hard to convince, eh, Commissioner? I presume you noticed Diane Childer's hands just now. What about them? Take a good look, Commissioner. Well, Margo, I don't believe our services are needed here any longer, so good night, Weston. Yeah, go home and read a mystery book. Good night. Lamont, what about Diane Childer's hands? Margo, they looked as though they'd been attached to wires. Wires? Then you were right about Rico using a human puppet. Perhaps. But I think he holds the answer to that question. And the shadow is going to pay a call on Rico... Puppeteer extraordinary. You've got your money. Now what do you want? Rico, I read in the papers that this Diane Childer is actually missing. So much the better for Rico's publicity. Perhaps now Goro will realize that I have wit and that I am clever. What? Oh, nothing. Now, Rico will be greater than ever, and he will have to admit that I did it without his knowledge, that I thought of it myself. Rico, listen to me. Where is this woman? What have you done with her? Oh, I do not know. I thought this was just a stunt for the papers, but if you... I do not know where she is, I tell you. Now go. All right. I'm leaving. Do you know, when I screamed last night in the theater, it was only partly an act. There was something about that puppet in the dance macabre that... Was lifelike and yet... Of course. I am the great Rico. And yet deathlike. What do you say? What are you blabbing about in here, Rico? Oh! Who is this woman? What is she doing here? Oh, I can tell you now, Coro. I hired her to pose as Diane Childer's sister. So it was you who concocted that stunt for the papers, you stupid, blundering fool. You, you woman. Me? Get out of here. Yes. Get out before yes, I... Yes, yes, I'm going. I'm, I'm going. I ought to kill you. Oh, no, no, Goro. I am your brother. I wanted to help. I thought it you would be thought. good. You thought? Since when have I allowed you to think? Since when have I allowed you to do anything but be my face for the world? And so, Goro, you are betrayed by your own brother. What? Who said that? I heard a voice, Goro. <laughs> it is the voice of the shadow, Rico. Where are you? I can't see you. Where are you hiding in my studio? The hiding place of the shadow will never be found, Goro. No man has ever seen me. I am not afraid of you, unseen one. What do you want? Why did you come here? Rico, the puppet used in the dance macabre was not a puppet, but the body of Diane Childer. I don't know. Shadow, I do not work the puppets. He does. Shut up! You're a fool, my brother. Hello? You murdered Diane Childer, didn't you? I defy you to prove that voice. There is no proof. The shadow will prove it, Garo. Oh, no, shadow. Never. Other criminals have thought themselves a match for the shadow and have paid for their crimes. Not Goro. Never Goro. We shall see. 
We shall see. Here we are, Rico's studio is just around the corner, Margot. Remember what you're to do? Yes. I'm to give you five minutes, and then if you don't come out, I'm to phone Commissioner Weston and get him here quickly. Right. I'd hate to wear those big hands of Garros as a collar very long. Oh, Lamont, don't joke about it. You know how strong he is. All right, Margot. Everything's going to be all right. What do you want? Why am I always... I want to see Rico, Goro. Oh, yes. Yes, you are the curious man, the man who is interested in the art of puppeteering. Come in. Come in. Thank you. How fortunate that you came tonight. I want to speak with Rico. Yes? Well, I'm afraid that's impossible. I demand that you take me to him. But I have... He's here, in the studio. What? Ask him your questions if you wish, but I'm afraid he'll prove to be a rather unresponsive conversationalist. He was stupid in life. He looks even more stupid now, hanging there from the ceiling. You've killed him. And strung him like a marionette. All his life he's been my puppet indeed. Now he is, in fact, you madman. And now you are going to join him, my dear. Oh, no, you don't. My hands are strong, my friend, even though my legs are weak. <laughs> Another human puppet for my collection. Huh? Or oh, somebody knocking. Ah, oh, too bad. You'll have to wait, Mr. Cranston, while I answer the door. Come into this room till I'm ready for you. There. I am coming. I am coming. What have you done with him? Oh, my curious friends are all visiting me at the same time. That is good. Come in. Oh. Now, we shall have a complete cast for my puppet show tomorrow night. What do you mean? My brother Rico was going to have our puppets perform tomorrow night. Unfortunately, he won't be able to work the puppets himself because he is one of the performers, and you also, my dear. Where is Lamont Cranston? Oh, he's here, don't worry, and he too will perform with you tomorrow night. Can you dance, miss? I... Let me go. It doesn't matter. I can make you dance. <laughs> I can make you the greatest dancer in the world. I said that to her, too. But after a little while, she couldn't dance at all. And death had made her ugly. So I gave it to the cold river, as I shall do with you when I'm through with you. No! 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 I want to bring the police down upon me. <laughs> yes, yes, now you are much quieter. Now I can work. Now I can prepare my human puppets for my last great performance tomorrow night. You will never give that performance, Goro. What? Are you here, Shadow? <laughs> I said I would stop you, Goro. The police will be here any second now. Police? Oh, if I could get my hands on you, Shadow or not, I could crush the life out of you. That is not to be, Goro. Your days of crime are over. Not yet, Shadow. You're not strong enough to end them yourself. Open this door. Open up, I say. You're trapped now, Goro. The police are outside. Open up. There's places around They it. can't hold me. I'm too strong for them. Open the door or we'll break it down. Yes, I'll open the door. And you shall see. You shall see. Now. Look out, Weston. What? Stop him. Yes. Yes, my life was begun in pain. Now it ends in pain. Now I will no longer hate those who move gracefully and beautifully, for now I too am free. You know, Lamont, it's lucky that I didn't wait five minutes before I called Commissioner West. Yes, Margot. I owe my life to that. When you knocked on the door, distracted Garo and gave me a chance to regain consciousness and come back as the shadow. You know, Commissioner Weston thinks you escaped from Rico's studio before he got there. Oh, yes. Mm. <laughs> I wish you could have seen his face when Garo lunged at him. Ooh, I know just how he felt. <laughs> I'll get him. 
Shrevey, you're early. Yeah, I know, but something has happened to Big Charles again. Something has happened. Oh, what now, Shrevey? Well, I told you about the experience he's having with the vaudeville dog. Oh, you did, Shrevey, you did. Well, what do you suppose happened this morning to him again? What do you suppose? Uh, tell us, Shrevey. A lady is getting in his cab with a big box, and she says, rush to the hospital immediately. So Big Charlie is rushing, he's rushing. Hey, Shrevey. Wait, this is rich. She don't want to go there for herself. Hot dog, which is in the box. Yeah, she take the... How did you know? <laughs> I'm psychic. Go on. Well, this now dog is sick. Is and... this one of your now long tail, Shrevey? Okay, so I'll cut it short. I'll cut. Hey, <laughs> you get it? Cut it short. Cut the tail short. <laughs> you get it? Yes, we get it, Shrevey. Uh-huh. And so this dog is... is having puppets in Big Charlie's cab too. He's yeah, having. Yeah, yeah, little puppets. Big Charlie says that what happened to him shouldn't happen to a dog. Oh, Shrevey. <laughs> a real-life drama proving that crime does not pay will be presented immediately after a message from John Barclay. Here he is, Blue Coal's distinguished home heating expert, Mr. Barclay. Thank you. Friends... There's a hard battle ahead of us in war work. None of us can afford to spend energy needlessly. It's time to cut out waste of all kinds. For example, waste motion and waste fuel in the operation of your furnace. I urge you to think about this because it's serious. Find out how to operate your furnace most efficiently, with the least possible effort on your part. Your blue coal dealer will be glad to help you in this with no charge, no obligation, whatever. He'll send a John Barclay trained serviceman to your house to give your heating plant a thorough inspection, to demonstrate proper furnace operation, and to tell you, too, about the remarkable blue coal automatic heat regulator, a really great work saver. The regulator is easy to install, and you'll find it's economical. It'll pay for itself in fuel savings. And if you rent your home, you can take it with you when you move. Get in touch with your friendly blue coal dealer tomorrow. I promise you'll be well pleased with his services. Thank you. The Shadow Program is based on a story copyrighted by Stephen Smith Publications. The characters, names, places, and plot are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Today, at the start of a new year, we bring you last year's biggest crime-busting case. Proof that crime does not pay. (coughs) Louis Lepke Buckhalter, one of the most powerful racketeers in the country's criminal annals, sits in a room alone, waiting. Several miles away, two of his henchmen walk into a small candy store. We got a message for you, Joe. Yeah. Yeah. A message from the boss, Joe. Oh, no. No, don't do it, boys. Don't do it. You're a double-crosser, Joe. No! You got me wrong. Back in his room, Lepke looks at his watch. (laughs) Ah, It's done by now. That's another one. The cops will never pin on me. (laughs) Don't be so sure, Lepke. The law never forgets. November 30th, 1941, in Kings County Court, Lepke and his two trigger men all met the same fate. Sentence of death in the electric chair. The weed of crime bears bitter fruit. Crime does not pay. The shadow knows. <laughs> Next week, same time, same station, your friendly blue coal dealer brings you another strange and thrilling adventure in the shadow's daring battle against the forces of evil. Be sure to listen, and be sure to phone your neighborhood blue coal dealer for greater heating comfort at less cost. Remember, keep the home fires burning with blue coal. This program was produced by the DL&W Coal Company, distributors of blue coal.